What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So last week we talked about how to use the spans function in Profile Builder 3 in order to create objects or create profiles that were extruded between the supports as opposed to extruding along the entire assembly. Today we're going to talk about how to do the exact same thing but this time with repeating components between our supports. If you're interested in checking out Profile Builder, you can get the free trial at the Sketchup sketchupessentials.com slash profile builder. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So I will link to the other video below about um, basically using spans and patterns um, that you can use to create different patterns between vertical supports. In this case what we want to do is we're going to create a fence but we're going to create a fence where this component is going to repeat along the length of the fence and we're going to do that without that actually um, and we're going to do that where that'll uh, basically automatically scale this fence object in here in order to uh, fill the spacing between the different spans. So let's just go ahead and get started and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So to start off we're going to go into our profile builder menu and we're going to open the assembly dialog and so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a new assembly and so in this case we have a new assembly in here so all we're gonna do is we're gonna start off and we're gonna add our component and in this case our component is this vertical support post you can see how I've created this as a component within my model but you're just gonna come in here and click the plus button to add a component and you can see how there's an option down here for pick for model so we're gonna go ahead and select that and click on it. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and name this, and we'll just call this support post. That'll just help us keep organized as we go, but you can see how those support posts have now been added inside our assembly. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to start off and we're going to create a profile member that's going to get extruded along the length of this object. So to start off, we're going to add that profile member. And so in order to do that, um, I've created these posts as 4 inches by 4 inches. And basically all I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to model the size of that face that I want to have in here. So you can see how, I may need to do this with the rectangle tool, there we go. You can see how now I've brought this in as a face. And so what we want to do is we want to run this as a profile member inside this assembly. So the first thing we need to do is add it as a profile member using the profile dialog. So start off and come in here and click on the profile dialog. And uh, this is kind of left over from before. We're going to go ahead and add a new one. We're just going to click the plus button and we'll just call this... Um, We'll just call this rail board and we're going to go ahead and click OK. And so what that's going to do is that's going to create a new profile based on this face that we had selected. And the one thing we want to do in this case is we don't want our starting point to be in the center. We want it to be on the bottom because we're basically going to inference this down or we're going to move this down so that it's six inches down meeting the top of this component. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move this to the bottom middle. And once I've done that, you can go ahead and you can save this if you want to. And so once I've done that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add that into my assembly. And I find that the easiest way to do this is just to put an instance of this in your model somewhere. So just a little short one. That way when you come in here, you can just select this using the eyedropper. But then we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to minimize that window. And what we want to do is we want to add this as a profile member. But what we don't want to do is we don't want to add it as a profile member over here. And the reason why is if we add it as a profile member over here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go into the profile member section, click the plus button. I'm going to use the pick from model option. Well, when I click on that, and then let's go ahead and add an example version of this. If you add this as a profile member, you can see how this is going to run continuously along this object. Well, we wouldn't build that this way because we would basically add a board in between every support. So what we want to do is we want to delete that back out and we want to come into our spans and we want to add that as a span. So in the span tab, just click the plus button. You want to select profile member and then with pick for model, we're going to come over here and we're going to select this profile that we had in here before. And so now what we can do is we can select this and we can update it. And so you're going to notice when we update it, you get this break in here. And the reason you get this break in here is because now this is creating this as a span, meaning it's starting a new copy of this at every vertical support. So now we can come in here and we can use our left, right, and up, down offsets to put this where we want it to be. So in this case, this needs to be offset by probably about two inches so that it's centered. So we're going to go into our left, right offset. We're going to add a value of two. 
and I'm going to hit the tab button in order to do that. And we can go ahead and we can update this assembly and you can see how I move this the wrong way. So we're actually going to set this as a negative 2 and hit the tab key and then we'll update this assembly. So you can see how now this is centered on this assembly. And so now what we want to do is we want to add a start setback because what's happening is this is starting at the beginning of these support posts. Well, we want it to start at the end and they're four by four. So we're going to add a start setback of four inches and hit the tab key. Now, if we come in here and we update this again, you can see how these are starting four inches into the assembly. So these are now starting at the beginning of the support post. And so now what we want to do is we want to add a, an up-down offset. And so this whole thing in here is four foot six inches tall and I want this to be six inches down from the top. And so in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my up-down offset to four foot zero inches. And then I'm going to come in here and click the update button. And you can see how what that did is this now starts this four feet off the ground. And so now we have our repeating profile member inside our assembly. And so what we want to do is we want to have one of these on the top and also on the bottom. And if you'll notice, if you come in here, this piece is also six inches off the ground. And so what we want to do is we want to add a second profile member. Or one cool function in Profile Builder 3 is whatever you have selected here, when you click the plus button, it's going to duplicate that. So I'm going to click the plus button and first of all, let's name this first span. So in this case, this is going to be top board. And then we're going to click the plus button. And we're going to add this in. And we're going to call this one bottom board. And so basically what that did is that duplicated this in here. And we're going to set the up down offset on this one to six inches. And then we're just going to update our assembly. And so now I have a vertical or I have a top and I have a bottom board running along this face. And so, so far we haven't really done anything that we haven't done before. What we want to do now is we want to add our span in here, or we want to add our component in here as a span as well. And so in order to do that, you're just going to come in here and you're going to click the plus button to add a span. And so when you add that span, you want to come in and drop and select this drop down and you want to select the option for component. And so when you select the option for component, then you can then come in here and click the pick from model option and you can add a component. And so in this case, I click this button and for some reason that's not showing up the words pick from model, but that's what this button is. So we're going to select this and then this will turn into an eyedropper where you can go select a component within your model. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on this component. And you can see how this automatically adds this in here. And in this case, this has actually got some leftover stuff in here from when I was uh, testing this assembly. But you can see how in this case, this has setbacks set in here. Well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to knock those back down to the defaults for right now. And then we're going to go ahead and update this. So we're going to select our assembly. We're going to come in here and we're going to click the update button. And so you can see what this does is this brings those repeating components in into your assembly. And so that's going to repeat as many times as your profile repeats in here. So if I was going to do a really long fence like this, you can see how that's repeating across that whole face. But we need to do the same thing we did before where we need to add our start setback of four inches. And so we're going to go ahead and set our start setback to four inches. So that's going to start this at the beginning part of this vertical support post. And then we're also going to need to set our left right offset to negative two again so that this is centered. And so if we come in here and we update this, you can see how now we have our setback applied and we have this centered in our object. So now all we need to do is set our up down offset. So in this case, our up down offset is going to be six inches. So we'll come in here, we'll set that to six inches and we'll go ahead and we'll rerun this assembly. And so you can see how now this is flush and actually you can see how I set my left right offset one inch too much. This actually needs to be negative one. So you can see how I'm able to come in here and make these changes really quickly in profile builder. That's one of the really strong or one of the strengths of this is the ability to be able to come in here and adjust this so quickly. 
And so now what we've got is we've got an assembly where you have repeating components that are scaling to fit in here. And so you can see how what this is doing is as we add different support posts in here, it's scaling those components to fit inside those support posts. And so one thing you can do in here if you want is if you don't like the way this is stretched out, you can come in here and you can adjust the spacing. So let's say for example that you didn't want the spacing to be quite so big, you can come in here in your components and you could move your vertical support so that it's spaced at six feet instead of eight feet. And then you could come in here and you could adjust this and you can see how this automatically resizes in here. So this is a really powerful way to create complex repeating assemblies. And if you really wanted to, you could do something a little bit more complex. So let's say for example, that I had a more complex railing component in here that I wanted to use. Well, in this case, what I could do is I could just swap that out. So if I wanted to, I could come in here and instead of my component span three, which is this piece, I could come in here and I could select my component within the span. I could come in here and I could pick a different component. And then I could come in here and I could update my rail. So you can see how now this vertical rail piece or this piece right here is getting placed at every location instead of the X. So you can see how powerful this is. And then one other thing you could do, and I'm not sure how well this is gonna work with uh, this particular infill component, but let's say that you wanted to create more of a vertical rail. So let's say you had a stair that was running this way. Well, what you could do is you could come in here in your span and you could check the option for shear to fit. So right now, if I come in here and I create this rail this way, what this is doing is this is repeating this component, but it's not shearing it up and down. And so you can see how that doesn't give me a very good vertical rail. Well, if you check this box for shear to fit, and then you come in here and you update this assembly, what that's gonna do is that's gonna shear your rail up and down so that it can follow this, uh, this angle. So again, this is really powerful for creating different things like this. You could also use this to create a curved rail along a path. So if you were to select this path, then you would use the build along path function. This would curve this along this path. So this is a really powerful way to create these complex profiles within your models. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Is this a function you're interested in? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you're interested in trying out Profile Builder 3, make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.